What is up guys, welcome back to 25 High. This is kind of an awesome video, kind of sucks because I I missed a very important part of the story. But uh, <clears throat> basically, let's go back to the beginning of the story of how this hunt unfolded. So I guess the, the first thing to talk about is my buddy Brady, you've seen him on the channel. Me and him, we've he joined my lease and we have been hunting together. We've been making it a team effort to uh, break down my lease and, or our lease now, try to find the biggest bucks on it, try to figure out what needs to happen to improve the property. And basically what we figured out, we, we had this one buck that we had our, our minds on. And um, it was like the first big buck we found. There's a couple other really nice bucks on the lease, but this was the biggest that was on my on our lease. We had our minds set on that, and throughout the course of about two or three months over the summer, we put out corn, cameras, minerals, uh, all sorts of stuff. And other than that buck, the other thing that we figured out was we have, which I already knew this, we, it's been a, an ongoing problem that I've talked about on this channel quite a bit. My lease has quite a bit of a doe problem. We've got way too many does for, to buck ratio. Um, trying to get, I've been for the past couple years trying to get that down, but I don't want to be the only guy who goes out there and kills does. So that's, the, both of those things kind of play, they play a very important role in the story of, of what we're doing. So first few clips are me and Brady chasing the buck. And we had made a pact like we were going to alternate who hunts this buck. This was our original quote unquote original plan was first morning of opening day or first morning that the wind was good. We're going to hunt this buck. One of us is going to hunt. The other one's going to film. Next chance the wind is good. The other one's going to hunt and the other one's going to film. That's the, pretty much the start of this story. So I'm now, now I'm going to play what I said I was going to play. So after that rigmarole, um, there were a couple times we did alternate hunts. There were a couple of times where we hunted the big buck holes, as we called it, individually. It, like Brady hunted it a couple times, I hunted it a couple times, and then after about a week and a half, we decided, look, dude, this is this ain't gonna work out. The buck disappeared off our cameras. Um, we don't know what he's doing. We don't know where he's at. Let's just pull the camera. We'll hunt here when we can, and hopefully somebody kills him. And in the meantime, after the first 10 days was up, let's go on a absolute doe mission. 
and that turned out to be a total disaster. Here are some clips from that. That was freaking cool, though. She got, she got, two, she got the 35. Okay. <laughs> that was freaking cool. If I would have been able to draw a clean. Dang. Dude. That was freaking that awesome. It worked. That was freaking awesome. It worked. She did. She still doesn't know what happened. That was, that was the dumbest deal I've ever hunted. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. Dude, she, she charged us for a second. Yeah, she, she was right next to that black tree, wasn't she? Yeah. That black tree is 40 yards. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. I was gonna, I was about to just snatch my bow back and put my 40 yard pin right in the center of her chest. Look at that guy, that's just a huge line of speckled belly geese. We've been hearing them all morning, we saw one group. That's, that's so freaking cool. the sixth cool. or seventh group we've seen, that's crazy. Is it, we're... Uh, they're just right there, that's so cool. That is so cool, dude. Just listening to them. I've never seen them here. Uh -uh. Like we're we're a long ways from where speckled bellies typically end up. I mean, I mean the, we see we see Canada geese every year, but not many. But seeing six big wads of look, there's another wad to the right of them. Yeah, look at that. That's look at all. Look that's at all a completely of, separate wad. That's still the same. Well, no, that's no a, they didn't split. Look, there's three wads. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That you can see them. Man, that is cool. What the heck is going on, man? That's unreal. I've never heard like, other than like in videos and stuff. I've never heard that that noise. Look, I there's another the fourth wad. It, look at that little group. Yeah, look at this. Like I knew it was geese. I knew I could hear geese. No, I heard but, it when I was up in Mississippi duck hunting. Yeah, that they were in that's, but that, around here, that's unheard of. Well, that, I mean, the other side of Mississippi is typically the closest place you see them. Yeah, and we're in the middle of Alabama. That's unreal. I've never in my life seen that. During this doe mission, in between hunts, I was checking cameras on public. I was getting fired up to go hunt public, public and I should have. I should have gone on and, and hunted public more often than I did because I've got some really nice bucks on camera. Um, but I didn't. I was staying focused on the mission to kill does, and for whatever reason, every time we buck hunted, we saw like 20 does, and then every time we doe hunted, we either didn't see anything or nothing came within range and now comes opening weekend of rifle season this is the time when you can reach out and touch them this is the time when all bets are off we're going to absolutely 
do a number. We're gonna get some camp meat. We're gonna get some house meat. We're gonna we're going to meet. We're going on a meat haul, and open the day. Nobody sees anything. It's, it was just terrible hunting. And then the day after opening day, Sunday morning, the morning of this video, I woke up super late, and I climb, I get to my stand. You'll see it in the video. Basically, where it starts is I get to my stand at shooting light. So at this point, 
I'm sitting in the ladder. I am, I got my gun over my shoulder. I'm like halfway off the ladder almost just to get a solid rest because that was a, it was a stupid mistake to even take a shot that far without doing it on paper and knowing what I could do. Um, but I'm sitting there, like I say, completely not ready at all. Cameron was about to die. Uh, contemplating, I'm like, I'm looking down the pipeline and I'm like, there's a few trees that stick out a little further. If I can work my way between each one of those trees and just sneak in, because the does didn't move. They, you saw in the video, they just went back to feeding. If I just sit, if I just sneak along the edge of this pipeline, there's a good chance I can get within a well enough range that I can get a solid rest and not have to do any of that holdover crap that I don't really understand. I can just aim direct. I know out to like 250, I should just be able to hold on the shoulder. And then the other thought that popped into my mind is the road that I was sitting near makes like a big, it makes a big Y down way north of where I was at and or east, something like that. And if I go down there and make that Y and walk all the way up, there's a chance that if those deer are still there, I'd have like a 60 yard chip shot. So I'm going, all these thoughts are going through my brain. All of a sudden, this huge body deer runs out across the pipeline. And all I see in my scope is brow tines and decent main beams. I just shot a freaking nice buck. I shot, missed those deer, a deer ran across, I went, man, I just shot a buck. I can't tell what it is, but he's a nice buck. Oh my, my camera's about to die. My heart is racing. I felt good about the shot. Oh my God, what just happened? Oh my God. So, here's what happened. I uh, I was in that letter. I got there late, as you saw. There's a deer eating corn. I thought it was eating corn, it may not have been. Um, I said, well I can just shoot this and get this morning over with, go do some scouting on public, go uh, check some cameras on, on the lease, do something. Just, or just go clean it and go take a nap. That would be nice too. <laughs> and uh, as <clears throat> soon as I got a good solid rest, like I say, I hesitated because I was like, that might be a button buck. I thought I saw little nubs or something. I was like, yeah. And then before I could figure out what it was, it just started walking. Walked right off into the woods. I thought, okay, whatever. It's still early deer moving. I climb up, see some does cross the pipeline. I'm like, huh, that's pretty cool. Maybe they'll come this way. Nope, they go to the food plot. That's roughly about 400 yards. I, I can't I can't get a good range on it. It's somewhere between like 380 and 420. And a 308 goes from, I think it's like 375. It drops like 8 inches, something like that. And at 400, it drops like 25 inches. So it's hard to, hard to just guess when it's that far. But... I've studied on ballistic charts and stuff, so I said, maybe i try it. If I hit it, I'll kill it. If I hit it good, you know. Um, I know my left and right's good. I know where it's out of them. All I gotta do is like get the up, get the elevation right. So I shoot, and right next to that thing's front feet, I see dirt kick up. So, obviously, I didn't hold high enough. That stinks, but they're still there. And I was trying to decide if I could, if I had enough room or margin for error, enough places to hide to sneak down the pipeline and get within about 250. Because then I could just, if I had a solid rest, I could just hold my crossers right on the thing's shoulder. The way my gun's set up. And I uh, sitting there thinking about that. And I'm like, well, I could get down, get in my truck, and drive around and sneak in up the pipeline and be like 60 yards away. Take longer, no guarantees that they're, they're still there. But it... I mean, it'd be a 50, 60 yard shot, I'd chip shot. I'm like, well, I don't know about doing that. And I'm sitting there contemplating. My camera was on like 5% for some reason. So I just turned it off and I've got like one foot down on the step and one foot on the top of, of the, one foot on the platform of the ladder because that was the best way to get a good rest. Guns over my shoulder. All of a sudden I hear something like, what? This deer just runs across the pipeline. And it's a big deer. I could tell it was a big body deer, but I couldn't tell what it was. I put the scope on it and it was looking away from me and I just see antlers. No telling what it is. I just see good antlers, good brow tines, look pretty wide. And I just put the crosshairs on its shoulder and shot. I'm pretty sure I saw a mule kick. 
through the scope. Um, I know I was holding like pretty much dead on the shoulder, but it just happened so fast. I don't, I'm worried I pulled the trigger. I'm worried, like snatched the trigger. You know, I'm I'm worried that maybe I'm my crosshairs weren't dead on. Plus my scope. Yesterday I shot it, and it was six inch, six and a half, eight inches. I don't know. It was off. It was missing paper high. But I sighted it back in. But I'm worried that. I mean, this scope's never been knocked off before, more than like a half inch. And I'm worried that, you know, something's messed up inside of it or I, I don't know. I'm worried about that it's not holding zero like a loophole should. But I don't know. I'm just going to give it a little time. I'm about to walk in there and just see if I see blood. And then uh, after that, I don't know. <laughs> oh my god look at this freaking buck that's the big buck this is the big buck this is the big buck <laughs> I can't believe it oh my god I think this is the big buck me and Brady have hunted this deer hard if this is him he looks like a freaking moose. Look how big he is. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't even know where I hit him. That might be it. If I, I might hit him back. But he's dead and he's mine. And he's right here and he's a stud. Oh my god. Oh my god. So, so I was actually able to kill the big buck this morning. Yeah. I mean, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I, like I said, I could see it, like half of his body, three quarters of his body. Yeah. It did like just his head was behind the tree. I, I was like, dang, that's a big body deer. Like that's a really big body deer. I kept getting closer. He kept getting bigger. And then I, you get, I finally come around the tree and I'm like, dang, he's got a really nice rack. <laughs> And then I didn't realize which buck it was until I picked his antlers up. You could see in the video. I, I'm like, I'm like, dang, that's actually a really nice buck. And I pick it up. I'm like, oh my god! You <laughs> tell <Damn. laughs> That's freaking awesome. All right. So what's the first one? Inside spread? Yeah, probably so. Right, All right. What's four, your guess? Left, four, oh, 17 and three quarters. Say 16. Outside the outside is 17 and a quarter. I was close. 17 and 2 eighths. Inside spread. A little over 16. Yeah, that's what I figured. It'd probably be like right in. Wouldn't be like right there, yeah, right there. I'm looking. 